Our latest allocator implementation is better because it does support free, but it does have a weakness illustrated by this scenario. Suppose we've set up memory to have uh, blocks of size uh, 2, 3, 3, and 4, um, and then we free this uh, blue block here. That means that its allocation bit gets set to 0, no problem there. Free the pink block, its allocation get, bit gets set to 0, no problem there. Now suppose we want to malloc something of size 5 words, so we'll need a 6 word block, and we don't have a 6 word block. But we could have a 6 word block. There are 6 words right here that are not currently allocated. The allocator is allowed to use those. Um, so this is another case of fragmentation. Fragmentation this time coming uh, not from failing to free things, not from gaps in our allocation, but from not merging some unallocated blocks that we could merge and use as a single out. Right. That merging process is called coalescing. And in this case, what we would like is for free of P3, free of the pink block, to coalesce that unallocated block with the previous block, making a block size 6. More generally, what we want is the invariant that no two unallocated blocks are next to each other. And if they're never next to each other, that means we've merged them always successfully so that we always have uh, the blocks as big as possible. And if we start out with this invariant, we can maintain it just in free, um, since free is the only thing that creates unallocated blocks. It turns out there are four cases that cover all the possible cases. One is that the block that you're freeing is in between allocated blocks. In that case, there's nothing to merge. You just set the bit as before. On the other hand, if you're freeing a block and the block after it is currently unallocated, that means we want to merge this block that we're freeing with the next one. Okay, so that means we're going to take the next block size and add it to the, the, freed, the newly freed block size to get a larger block size. Another possibility is that the block we're freeing is preceded by an alloc allocated block, but the block after it is still allocated. In that case, we're merging the freed block with the previous block. So we're going to be adding these sizes and changing the size of the previous block. And the last case is that the block that you're freeing is between two currently unallocated blocks. Uh, then we're going to add up all the sizes and install it into the first of those blocks. This is all the possible cases because uh, there can't be a free block here after, uh, after this unallocated three block, for example, uh, because if there were, it would have broken the invariant. Um, and the same thing for here. There can't be free blocks before this one or before this one or after this one because of the invariant. And as long as the invariant was true coming into free and we merge in this way, then it'll be true going out as well. There's a catch here based on our current uh, data structures, which is that to check whether the block before this blue block is available, whether it's unallocated, uh, we need to go backwards. But our linked list only goes forward right now. Our options are either to start at the beginning of the list every time. We've already seen that that's a, that's a performance issue already with allocation. Now we're making it a performance issue for free, uh, so that would be bad. The other alternative is to make it a doubly linked list. And we can make it a doubly linked list by putting uh, not only a header on every block, but also a footer. And in the footer, we don't need the allocation bit because that's stored in the header. We need the size so that we can follow the pointer backwards. So our overhead now is going to be twice as big as it was before. We've got a header and a footer, and the payload goes in between. Uh, but the benefit is that free can, in constant time, find out whether the previous block is allocated.